and thanks everybody for coming. So we'll talk about decoupling Drupal Commerce to scale the front end. Uh, quick introduction for those who don't know me. My name is Matt Glaman. I am a product lead at Centaro, and Centaro powers e-commerce innovation through every stage of growth. Um, if that name sounds familiar as well, we used to be called Commerce Guys, and we recently went through a rebranding. So before we get into decoupling Drupal Commerce, let's just think about why you would want to decouple your e-commerce application in the first place. One of the main reasons is you might have different markets, right? An e-commerce store could be your e-commerce business could sell in the United States, in Canada, in European markets, or you could have different franchises within one country and have multiple stores that have their own website. Um, and those different websites and markets might have different localization requirements. Brands in one company. So decoupling allows you to put that ownership into that marketing team or whoever is like the owner of that market. Um, reaching consumers from any device. We're in a different age now where we have all kinds of things that you can buy on. You can buy things using an RFID and then go to a kiosk and see your cart. Um, Amazon Go being one example of that. We have smartwatches uh, and all that good fun stuff that keeps on growing. And then also you usually want to go headless or to decouple um, to scale uh, with most full stack applications. When I say full stack application, I mean like Magento, Drupal, WordPress, all those where the back end renders all the data and then sends it fully rendered to the front end. That render process for a lot of these systems is the most expensive part. So by taking off the presentation layer of your full stack, you're instantly gaining some performance. So why decoupled Drupal Commerce if you're going to do a decoupled e-commerce application? Uh, one thing that Drupal Commerce really excels at is its multi-tenancy, which basically means you get a multiple stores in one backend. Um, and each store uh, has different product availability, dynamic pricing, and other features that tie in. So you can take one install and segment it into different stores. For the dynamic pricing, we have um, it can be used priceless or even in code work to make it based on the current user, the current store, what active promotions are available. Um, here's an example of landing on our React demo where you see this camera is available for 99 US dollars. But then once we go to the UK store, it's not available to add to the cart because it's only available at the US store. And you can see the pricing change to the proper currency. And then even in the German market, someone edited the content to say that it's not available and only in US markets and again shows the euro. Carts, so has a uh, cart API that makes it easy to manage your carts. Like I have a product, I want to add it to a cart and it will respect the available store and any of the currencies that need to be used or purchasing rules. And here's a quick thing about our carrot API. I was adding to the cart. Uh, if you have stock, it does do checks under that and pulls from the dynamic pricing system. And of course, allows you to update, delete, and clear your cart. Uh, we have promotions that lets you add condition-based promotions or also attach coupons to the promotion. So apply the coupon, you get a discount, such as here, taking a 15% promotion code, and you instantly get back the proper, the adjusted total and all of the components that make up the discount. Checkout, we have a checkout API that allows you to receive customer payment. Um, and I have the footnote that right now, or the Drupal Commerce platform only accepts offsite payment gateways for checkout, where that's like PayPal, checkout, Klarna. There's work being added to support um, paying via Stripe, Braintree, Square, all of those. Uh, you can also collect shipping information and get the rates for that, select the rates so you can do shipping through checkout. Um, one feature that we also showcase is embedded checkout. We have folks that use a decoupled front end and that front end just fetches products and shows add to cart and the cart is managed in a decoupled setup. But when it comes time to checkout, they didn't want to build the full checkout form. So they actually embed Drupal as an iframe and use the full stack checkout form inside of their decoupled front end application. Um, if you want to check any of this out, we do have a demo at react.demo.centaro.io. So let's go into some case studies. How did folks take this decoupledness and 
put things into the wild. One, I'd like to showcase our customer, Matt Smart. They are a online grocery store based out of Sweden. Uh, so Matt Smart built a grocery store business on Drupal Commerce and scaled it to tens of millions of dollars in revenue. And we kind of took them from a full, full stack Drupal site to headless to let them scale as they kept growing. Originally, it was Drupal 7 with Drupal 1.x, which for those who aren't in the Drupal community, we're now on Drupal Commerce 2, which is for Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. Um, decoupling allowed them to scale more quickly. Remember, they had a bottleneck on the amount of carts, so we started to cut out the Drupal rendering parts and make more headless to help them scale to more concurrent orders. Um, it allowed them to provide more deep integrations with third-party services, such as Findify, Klarna, and then the back end of with being Drupal Commerce as the API server could just focus on handling transactions and cart management. They also were able to launch into various other countries under their own branding using one backend server and just building a front end that talked to it and said, I am this store. Um, they've been an open source partner for us and they've helped us build all of this into Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. Um, they treated us as an open source software vendor, and not just a consultant, and have helped turn us into a fully featured cross-border e-commerce platform. Um, another case that I want to bring up that I can't say the name of, but it is a national brand that had increased business due to COVID-19. And How much business? They were only able to handle 100 orders a day on the full stack Drupal Commerce platform that they had built. But by decoupling the cart interactions, they're doing up to 5,000 orders a day. Um, and that's been going for quite a few weeks now. And we actually did this using progressive decoupling because they already had a system built and they didn't have the timeline or the budget to completely take down the old site and build a new one that's fully decoupled. So there are tens of thousands of existing Drupal Commerce sites that could leverage progressive decoupling to get that performance boost and help scale without taking on the old site, basically replatforming to a headless version of itself. So if you are considering you know, going headless, there are ways to get there along the way without doing like a full stop and then start on a new version of your site. I want to build, bring up Eldem React by 1x Internet. Uh, it is a food and meal service out of Iceland that is like uh, Simply Fresh here in the United States. So it's interesting is it's a full stack website, but also decoupled. So the website is a full stack Drupal commerce application that is also an API server because they have a React Native mobile app that's on Android and iOS that talks to the main website. Um, so even though they don't have everything fully decoupled at the moment on the web application, all these APIs they built to power their mobile apps could eventually be used to power, um, you know, the website, or let's say they ended up building like in-store kiosks, like you could do a little kiosk there that read from the website and let people manage their subscriptions. Another case sub study is Ayupki. I, I feel like I'm butchering this name um, by Bloom Idea. So it's actually an education platform that is launching in Portugal. It hasn't launched quite yet, but they're using Drupal Commerce to sell subscription content and education materials. And they have uh, a native iOS and Android application, and they've levered the JSON API implementation for Drupal Commerce to enable those development teams to just build the mobile apps and not have a tight coupling to the main website. Um, and they also utilize embedded checkout via a web view inside those native applications. So they've been able to grow. Um, instead of just having a website that folks have had lot to log into, they can actually get their educational content on their mobile devices, which, as we uh, many have seen with COVID-19, uh, my son's doing summer school virtually and did school virtually, and everything is moving to devices, but that's a little bit easier for them. So we're seeing the digital world is changing and Centaro is adapting Drupal Commerce to those changes to be a leading platform for cross-border e-commerce. And one way we're doing that is I want to introduce Centaro Commerce. So Centaro Commerce is a headless e-commerce platform powered by Drupal and the commerce framework. So it's our flavor of Drupal and Drupal Commerce packaged as an open SaaS 
So it's com we call it commerce with confidence on Drupal. So we're offering our own managed SaaS that is a headless e-commerce platform that gives you the benefits of open source collaboration. As you use the service, we build the platform and then others reap the benefits. You get the stability and security of a SaaS. And we say it's open SaaS because if you did start with us, you could just take your data and go because it's all open source. And this is our way to build sustainable product and open product development and open source development um, for ourselves and even the Drupal community as a whole, um, such as it's helped improve a lot of the JSON API improvements in Drupal. Um, and it's our way to help, help users get a setup for headless commerce without having to go and put all the bits together. So if you do want to give decoupled Drupal commerce a try to see how it can help you scale out, um, I, I will share these slides, but here's a few quick commands where you can create a new Drupal 9 site, um, get our modules, and then instantly have an API site. Um, and so here's that command that comes back. So again, it uses the JSON API spec and returns all that in that data, in that format rather. And I just wanted to say, then that's all I've got. So thanks. Uh, if you want to ask more or you have any other in-depth questions, um, feel free to contact me. My email is matt at centaro.io. Or we also host office hours on Tuesday and Thursday and have a pretty large community um, in the Drupal Slack workspace in the Commerce channel. Thanks. Matt, we do have one question from Brian. Uh, how does headless Drupal Commerce compare to headless Shopify solution or headless library? Yeah, so how does it compare to? So I would say like headless Shopify. Shop we so it depends if you mean Shopify or Shopify Plus. I'm going to assume Shopify Plus because that's where we've kind of pit ourselves as like a uh, market competitor. Um, we're cheaper, more flexible. If you get some title commerce, um, obviously if you build it yourself, it's extremely more flexible. Um, for headless hybris, that's where I'm not sure. Um, I know I've had to actually integrate Drupal Commerce with the Hybris backend, but Drupal Commerce wasn't even decoupled. Drupal Commerce itself was the front end for Hybris. Um, but yeah, I, I think you could compare it to Shopify Plus. Um, I think we have more capabilities because we have um, the multi-tenancy part. Uh, Ryan, Ryan, creator of Drupal Commerce and kind of like the godfather of e-commerce and Drupal, knows somebody who built a their brand with Shopify. And once they launched in the UK, they actually had to set up another Shopify store. So they're paying for two Shopify accounts for their one company. Whereas with Drupal Commerce, if you ran it yourself or had somebody run it for you, you could get both of those in one backend application. So it could save you in a bit. Cool. Uh, Corey asked, does uh, Centara Commerce connect to Salesforce or can it? I will say yes with an asterisk because everything about Salesforce is usually really bespoke, but we have two customers that are actually on Centaro Commerce where we have a, we have Salesforce integrations, but it's one of those, it's Drupal, it's PHP code. Um, so if you rolled your own, you could write that integration or we actually have a way in Centaro Commerce for you to write custom code and get it injected into your hosting. So if you didn't want to run your own, if you didn't want to manage your stack, and you're like, great, I want some Tyro Commerce, but I have some custom code. We do have a way to get that work in. Again, that's part of the open SAS, right? Some of your custom code. If you need to, if you decide it's time for us to bring this in-house, you can take your data and that custom code and run it yourself. Excellent. Uh, what front ends are the most popular for decoupled commerce websites uh, working with Drupal's API? And that comes from Mikhail. So it seems, I, I don't know. Um, I just do React, but I know every, that's like the, the um, age old argument is what to use. Uh, there are some JSON API clients written in JavaScript that are kind of front end agnostic. I haven't liked any of them, but I'm an extremely opinionated and picky developer. So I, I don't know because to me, I don't like any of them. Um, but we have our front end demo in React, and we're having somebody build a front end demo in Vue. 
So, and Drupal has actually decided to build some menu components and settled on Vue and React. So I know Angular's out there, but I think React and Vue is probably. Yeah, that's what I was actually gonna follow up with. Uh, in the Drupal scope land, Vue and React are the, uh, the two risers. I wouldn't say winners yet, but risers. Yeah. Um, uh, Corey right. asks, uh, if I recall, your team is still working on token-based payment gateways instead of housing the PII. Uh, is that correct? Oh, the personal personal identifiable information. So Commerce 2.x has always been tokenized from the beginning. Um, the only payment gateway that used to require housing PII was authorized.net way, way back. But then they finally created AcceptJS. Um, so that's all working and integrated. But that is our next oh, challenge, I'll say, or feature for our checkout API is supporting tokenized payment gateways through checkout. Right now we have it where if you do a headless checkout, we have you integrate with PayPal checkout or Klarna, something that takes the payment and then gives you a URL to ping. And then once you ping the URL, we can know to go check on that payment. Whereas something with that's tokenized like Stripe, Braintree, Square, and authorize that net you receive the token and then you need to submit that to the checkout and that performs the payment transaction so we're working on that workflow right now it's actually in our next sprint um next two sprints this sprint maybe in two sprints to get that functionality added and just as like a footnote to that that's not secret sauce that's going to go in our to our commerce api module so everybody gets to be able to use that cool and he says great thanks uh any other